Taiwan's first domestically made submarine, the Haikun, has completed its initial sea trial. The 1.67 billion US dollar vessel is part of the country's bid to modernize its military amid increasing aggression from China. Several countries, including the US and the UK, helped with its development. Taiwan aims to have two locally made submarines on active duty by 2027. For more on the Haikun's latest progress, our defence reporter Jaime Ocon spoke to David Sachs, a security analyst with the Council on Foreign Relations. Part of the funding for Taiwan's submarine program is frozen in the LY until it passed sea acceptance tests, and now we're seeing that underway. What do you make of that progress for Taiwan's military? Yeah, it's good progress. Um, you know, as you mentioned in your question, the submarines have been highly contested in the legislature, and that was uh, frozen by the opposition until they hit certain milestones. So I think that, you know, hopefully that is now uh, going to be unfrozen if the submarine continues to make progress. Again, you can argue, is that money best spent um, on submarines or is it best spent on other capabilities, you know, dollar for dollar? But my argument has always been that that has been resolved. Taiwan's government has been committed to the submarine program. And so the question is, knowing that, uh, is it better to have one submarine or 10 submarines? And given the kind of sunk cost to this program for Taiwan, if all it did was end up with one submarine, that would be a huge waste, right? All the R&D, um, all the man hours that it's taken to develop this platform, uh, to manufacture it in Taiwan and now to, to test it. I mean, you know, your unit costs are gonna go down the more you make because in my view, it is an asymmetric capability. We know that China struggles, at least to this point, with uh, anti-submarine warfare. It adds questions to planners, I think, in the PLA about whether they can find these submarines and destroy them during a conflict. Let's say Taiwan it does complete the program and get eight submarines in its fleet. How would they be used in a peacetime and in a wartime scenario? Again, this is something that's incredibly difficult to do, is to find a submarine um, and obviously to take it out. It's also something that the United States has a comparative advantage over the PLA and is seen as an enduring U.S. advantage during a potential conflict over Taiwan. So I think that it adds uncertainty to the Chinese um, planners. Uh, so, you know, of course, the, the question during a, an invasion, I think, is straightforward, is that they would try to destroy the, uh, you know, they would try to destroy the invading forces crossing the strait. With these new capabilities, do you think Taiwan has a chance to do some sort of intelligence sharing with the United States and partners, given that it's able to operate in the same area as these countries? And I think is going to be a big question. Um, if the U.S. Navy uh, is obviously going to bring to bear its own submarines uh, in, a, in a potential conflict uh, over Taiwan, then there's going to have to be some level of uh, understanding about the water management between the U.S. Navy and Taiwan's Navy uh, and which side is going to do what. So that conversation will, will have to happen, um, you know, on whether there's going to be intelligence sharing or opportunities for that. Um, you know, I'm not too sure, but I think that at the bare minimum, there's going to have to be probably conversations between the U.S. and Taiwan about what role they play and how to um, you know, how to de-conflict and manage allied forces during a, a potential contingency. That was David Sachs from the Council on Foreign Relations.